Hi, uh, my name is uh, Mehdi Hamadani. I'm a lymphoma uh, and transplant physician um, and lead the transplant and cell therapy program uh, at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, today, I'm asked to uh, talk briefly about uh, second line treatments in younger um, transplant eligible uh, patients with relapsed or refractory uh, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, particularly in light of the three randomized uh, CAR T versus the standard of care trials uh, that were reported uh, uh, at the last American Society of Hematology meetings in 2022. So just to uh, orient the audience, uh, in patients with relapsed or refractory aggressive B-cell lymphomas, uh, the current standard approach in the clinic, at least for younger, fitter patients, it's to attempt second-line chemoimmunotherapies. And in patients who happen uh, to respond to these second-line therapies, the standard option is consolidation with high-dose therapy and autologous transplant. And this treatment um, is curative for roughly 50% of the patients who receive that consolidation treatment. The problem is that a big proportion of aggressive lymphoma patients, when they relapse, they do not respond to salvage therapies. And by definition, they are not candidates for autologous transplant consolidation. And these high-risk patients are arguably enriched um, when you look at uh, time to relapse analysis. Uh, so patients who relapse early after first line chemoimmunotherapies or patients who don't respond to those therapies have a higher likelihood of not responding to second line therapies and then they are obviously not candidates for high dose therapies. So can alternative treatment approaches improve outcome of these patients were a topic of three randomized studies um, that were recently presented. Um, so in these trials, aggressive B-cell lymphoma patients, predominantly diffuse large B-cell lymphoma patients who relapsed within one year of completing their frontline therapy, or, if, or those patients who never responded to frontline therapies were then randomized to the standard of care approach, which is salvage chemoimmunotherapy, followed by transplant in responding patients versus taking those patients directly um, to CAR treatment. Uh, these three trials use three different CD19-directed CAR therapies. Um, the Zuma study used AxiCell, uh, the Transform study used Lysocell, and the Belinda study used Tisa cell. The primary endpoint of these studies was event-free survival. Uh, which had varying definitions across these trials. Um, and two of these three trials using the AxiCell product and uh, the Lysocell product showed a event-free survival benefit in favor of CAR treatment, while the TISA cell trial uh, did not show such a benefit. Um, and uh, the reasons for this, uh, these discordant results uh, may lie in the differences uh, in the trial design or the accrued patient populations. Uh, so these trials arguably uh, start to challenge uh, the best second line treatment. Um, uh, but my personal take on the interpretation of these trials is that to date, none of these trials have shown a survival benefit in favor of one or the other approach. Uh, so in the absence of a survival benefit, and of course, if that survival benefit uh, is seen in future, our interpretation of these trials may change. But as long as you don't have a survival benefit, you can make an argument that these patients uh, may uh, either if whether you do CAR treatment in second line um, for all patients versus trying standard treatments in second line and reserving CAR treatment to non-responding patients at third line and beyond may eventually provide you comparable overall survival is a reasonable argument. So how I would apply these very important trials in my practices um, is kind of 
depends on how these patients come to our clinical practice. Uh, it is not uncommon in transplant and cell therapy centers to see lymphoma patients uh, who come to transplant centers after already starting second-line therapies, and some of those patients, by the time they see transplant and cell therapy physicians, have already achieved a complete or a partial response. Uh, the management of these patients uh, were not uh, the topic of these randomized trials. So if you see such patients, uh, considering autologous transplant in those patients is reasonable. And I would refer you to a paper in the March issue of Blood Journal uh, led by Dr. Maziar Shadman that looked at that question using registry data and seems to suggest that autologous transplant may outperform CAR therapy in chemosensitive patients. Uh, will I offer CAR to second line uh, in uh, in second line in aggressive B cell lymphoma? And the answer is yes. They are clearly patients who do not benefit uh, from autologous transplant. Uh, double hit patients, when they relapse, um, uh, even if they have chemosensitive disease, are unlikely to benefit from autologous transplant. And this is clearly uh, a subset where cell therapy's availability in second line is a game changer. Patients who have primary progressive disease on RCHOP, especially if they have CMIC gene rearrangement, are unlikely to do well. And this opinion is based on the refined study that was led by Dr. Luciano Costa, are also unlikely to benefit from autologous transplant, even if they have chemosensitive disease. So for these patients, I think second line cell therapy is reasonable. And then a large chunk of patients in second line are not even candidates for autologous transplant because of either comorbid conditions or advanced age. And for these patients, I think uh, cell therapy in second line is also a very reasonable option because there is clearly a set of patients we can't transplant, uh, but we can definitely offer cell therapies to those patients. So, so I think uh, the results of these three CAR versus standard of care trials are extremely important. Uh, they may not justify a one size fit all CAR for everybody in second line approach, but this is definitely going to be applicable to a big chunk of patients in second line setting. And in terms, I think these trials are really practice changing. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attention. And I look forward to your feedback on Twitter.